Hello and welcome. Today I wanted to go through and give you a tabletop view of the Kimber Micro 9. Well, I was going to hit the market around 215. There's several various versions of this gun. There's uh, This is the aluminum frame with stainless steel slice, stainless steel barrel, rosewood grips, which I love. Uh, got the Kimber checkering on them. You can see that maybe. Uh, the idea of this gun is it's designed to be like a 1911. It's missing the palm safety of a 1911 and it shoots 9mm. Out of all the uh, 9mm that I, I personally own, which is quite a few, this is the smallest uh, in size dimensions that I have. It's pretty close to an LC9 or EC9 when you kind of put them together try to make everything even up you can see that the you know they're pretty close but uh, I try to put the Kimber into a waistband holster that I've been using with the EC9 for the last few months and the gun wiggles in there because it's just a little smaller. What I think is really fascinating is the Kimber, which is you know all, all metal, stainless steel and aluminum, versus uh, a polymer gun with a steel slide, on the scale, on the kitchen scale, actually both weigh the exact same. And I made myself a little cheat sheet here of things I wanted to tell you. And they weigh, 15.6 ounces empty, which is the exact same as the EC9 or the LC9. Uh, single action trigger, it's got a really nice smooth trigger on it. Let's safety check. Gun is empty, magazine's empty. So the trigger has, you know. Just a little bit of set, and then it gets real crisp. Pretty nice. Very little creep. So it's listed as a seven pound trigger, but when my friend put his trigger scale on it and pulled it, he came up with 5.7. Pounds. Did it three times. One was a little bit less, one was a little bit more, and one was right there in the middle. So that's what it averaged out to be. 5.7 pounds. It's got a nice crisp break to it. Not a lot of creep. Uh, fits in your hand great. It's got the big dovetail like a 1911 has, so you get high up on the bore axis of it, right? The sights. Three dot. You know, I had to paint the the Ruger EC9. I had to paint the sights on that one. You see, they came black, and I put some white on the front. A friend of mine uh, just put green on the back of the EC9, with the front being white, and the nice contrast picked up pretty nice. I might do that to that one. But as we look at our spec sheet here that I made up, so you get a, a 7 and 1 is the capacity of this Kimber. Uh, you get 7 in the mag, 1 in the chamber. There's also a 6 round magazine, so you lose the black uh, extra round finger grip. But, you know, to me that's worth it because without it, with a, with a flush fitting mag, you can only get two fingers on the actual grip. So I prefer the seven round mags. Surprisingly for a Kimber the mags are really inexpensive. I found them to be anywhere between $27 and $29. Um, considerably less than the EC or LC9 mags are like $47. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Same 
seven and one, seven and one pistol. Um, what else do I have here that I wrote down? Uh, the sights are metal too. That's that was a big plus for the Kimber. You know, instead of plastic sights, they're actually metal and they're dovetailed in. You could get uh, night sights if you want to put in there. They're driftable. The overall length of the gun is 6.1 inches with a height of 4.1. Uh, grips, the width of it is 1 inch, 1.06, so just a little over an inch in width. You have a full length guide rod, a flat wound recoil spring at 15 pounds. And it has a beveled magazine well. They bubble the magazine well to help you get your mag in so you're not have to hit it just right. It just kind of hits and self aligns itself and goes in. As far as taking the gun out and shooting it, so. I'm probably somewhere around 800 rounds to it right now. I've let a lot of other people shoot it. I've shot it. And uh, so far, the reliability on the firearm has been flawless. Now, you know, every firearm is prone to uh, have a problem now and then as far as feeding or ejecting. But so far, with, uh, let's see, Federal Full Metal Jacket, 115 grain, Federal Full Metal Jacket, 124 grain. It's been flawless. It has had some uh, spear and some CCI uh, hollow points put through it. Flawless. It's had some Winchester, uh, 115 grain, uh, Full Metal Jackets put through it. It's fired that great. And there's one, there's one bullet that I have that gives a lot of my firearms a little bit of a problem, and that's the Black Box Winchester Tactical Training Rounds. They're, they're, not, a, they're not a round nose, and they're not a hollow point. They've kind of got a funny little step out, squared off end, and this gun ran through them no problem. Some of my other 9mm guns don't like that round. So... All in all, right now, you know, I got to give this Kimber high marks. It has a fantastic location, just like a 1911 mag release. And one thing I look for in a carry gun for CCW for self defense is does the mag drop out of the gun? Do I have to reach up and pull it out? And anytime I have a firearm that does that, you know, if I had to do a tactical mag change and you know, I fired it, the gun's empty, drop it. Slap a new one in there and go. Saves me time on my reload. That's a big plus. That's something I look for. I'm not even sure of the Ruger. Let's see. Yeah, it did a good job at that too, which is one of the reasons I carry the Ruger so much. It's just a good CCW gun. You know, it's like blue collar versus uh, white collar, right? With Kimber, you're obviously getting fantastic quality craftsmanship everything's tight smooth the way it should be flawless but uh, do I carry it every day no uh, the reason I don't though is because I have the EC9 and it's like just a personal thing I don't care if the EC9 gets a little scratch on it or anything over over the Kimber so these run anywhere from manufactured suggested retail price of $650 up to over a thousand depending on color. Do you have Crimson Trace laser grips? Is it the Raptor version? There's just different versions of it. Uh, you can usually find these though typically in the 550 range for the one like I have. Not bad, but I paid $230 for the Ruger. EC9, right? Which is one of the reasons why I prefer to carry it daily. But I tell you, you know, I, you couldn't go wrong with this either. You do have two different platforms. You got a striker fire, 
uh, versus a single action hammer. One thing about the Kimber I do like is if you've got it, if you've got it cocked back, you, know, you carry 1911 cocked and locked. So we throw the safety up on there. Okay, so safety's on. Shouldn't shouldn't fire right. Never want to trust that though. But you can still rack it with the safety on. Check to see if it's got a round in there, if it's empty. And they got a tiny little cut right here. You can kind of peek in there and see if you've got some, you know, got a bullet in there. But you'll see the brass contrast against the stainless steel. The one thing I wish Kimber would have done was they didn't put any type of red dot uh, reminding you that your safety's on. If you're a 1911 shooter, then you know if your safety's up. Another thing with the safety is it's really pretty easy to get down, but it's harder to get up. So it makes it progressive to put it back in. You know, and it's got a good distinct sound. But that's good because if you've got it, you know, you're ready for self-defense and there's your thumbs. So you can see it. So here I am. Lift up. I want to, I want to shoot it. It's off. You know, it comes off really, really nice. It's just... Boom, right there it is. Just like a 1911 should be. So, I do love it. I do carry it. I just don't carry it every single day. Um, probably, if I had to... Uh, I probably carry that Ruger EC9 probably 80% of the time with this Kimber, maybe 20%. Uh, there's another gun that's in the same market that I have. I've done reviews on before, and that's the Walther PPS M2. You know, it's basically the Walther's just a pinch, a pinch bigger than these two, a little heavier than these two, uh, but it's a Walther, right? So all three fantastic guns, good reputations. So there you have it. My uh, my thoughts on the Kimber Micro Nine. Uh, if you want a nice gun that you can be proud of, that shoots well, very accurate. Uh, to me, I think it's got, I actually think the recoil is extremely manageable on it. So, of course, that's, you know, that's all in shooting technique, right? If your gun's throwing you around, it's, it's you, not your gun. But I give it high marks, and I think you will too if you pick one up. Until next time, be safe.